So let's get to the two that have been slowly but surely increasing out there, the calcium score and the CIMT. So a calcium score uses CT technology, meaning this X-ray technology, X-rays that have computer involvement. The reason you have to have computer involvement on this is just think about it. The heart is beating 60 to 80 times per minute. If you just take an X-ray, you're not gonna get a clear image. But what can happen with CT angiogram is that you're taking those X-rays, meanwhile, the computer is beginning to pick up and understand that heartbeat and create that image which is a much more reliable image than an x-ray would be. Now, there are four uses for calcium score. Screening for people that have moderate Framingham risk, to rule out risk when people have a zero score or when they have low to moderate risk on Framingham. If they have a zero score, for the most part, you can say, look, you know what? You probably don't have plaque. It is possible, very unusual, but it is possible for people to have nothing but soft plaque and still get a zero score. So very few things are 100% in biology and medicine. Now, tracking progression. Matthew Budoff, the guy that did a lot of the early research in calcium scores, said, yes, you can actually track progression of plaque with a calcium score. But at the end of the day, it was a stretch. He was a big fan of it. He was trying to make it happen. It's just not very good at tracking improvement or worsening of plaque. Improved compliance. Again, as I think both of you have mentioned, you get a positive calcium score. And again, it's, it helps you start thinking about what's going on in your arteries. Now here's some issues to think about though. It measures calcium. It doesn't measure plaque. It's a great screening tool, but really only for folks with significant risk, not for a healthy 20 year old, it's got radiation. Now, for those of us, by the time we're in our 50s and 60s, that radiation risk from just a simple calcium score is very minimal, very, very minimal. So I don't think any of us need to be worried about radiation risk for ourselves. On the other hand, if we have a 20 year old nephew that's asking the question, I wouldn't recommend that 20 year old get a calcium score just yet. Either of you seen The Widowmaker? Well, The Widowmaker is, uh, there's two versions. The Widowmaker is the left anterior descending artery. It's a very common place to get plaque and it's called The Widowmaker because it often kills folks. But here's the reality. In terms of heart attack and stroke, females are clearly the superior gender. There's no question about it. And I think if you've been looking at this distribution of calcium, you see why. And is it because of our weight? Is it because of testosterone? Is it because of you name it? I'm not gonna go there. That would all be guesses anyway. But by the time we're 50, almost half of us, actually more people have plaque, more men have plaque than don't have plaque. For women, by by the time they're 50, still 70% of them have zero plaque. And you have to get up to about, well, I think it's about age 60 before women cross that 50-50 divide. So interesting information. Ever hear the term or the name Arthur Agatston? This is all Agatston scores that we were looking at a minute ago. We're looking at here. I showed it for a second. You got a flash of it. The South Beach diet, Arthur Ag Agatston. That's a very young Arthur Agatston there. I would guess he's maybe in his early 50s in that picture. He's probably, he may be pushing 70 now, at least in his mid 60s. But same Arthur Agatston. So again, cardiologist down in the Miami area. So I'd like to talk with you a minute about the webinar. People don't understand what the webinar is. It's actually a great way to get some access to healthcare that you're just not going to get any other way. You actually get the lab tests yourself for at a local lab, a Quest lab near you, for the inflammation panel and the OGTT and the insulin survey. These are things, inflammation and prediabetes, that your doctor just does not know about. And here's the thing, Harvard Health and many others have said, look, sudden death is not always so sudden. The Hollywood picture that it's a bolt out of the blue is not realistic. It's more like real lightning preceded by clouds, wind, and rain. Stop that metabolic storm before the lightning strikes. And here's where that metabolic storm comes from. It's inflammation, and it has to do usually with 
prediabetes. So again, we actually get labs, we go over them in the webinar, and then you can start finding out how you can prevent that heart attack others said that you couldn't even predict. We can show you how. Thanks.